All right, I'm Des Asante from the Tech Muse Academy, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Tech Muse podcast. Um, today, I'm I'm live streaming this episode on Blab. Blab.im is where you go to uh, to learn more about that. Follow Tech Muse podcast uh, on Blab if you want to catch these conversations live while they're actually happening and join in. Uh, because what I like to do is I like to uh, to say what it is I have to say uh, that particular week, and then open up the seats and get people to uh, to come on live and lend their thoughts, ask their questions, and and uh, and and you know give some comments to the the topic at hand. Okay, so Blab.im. Uh, I believe it's slash Tech Muse Podcast, but I'm not 100% certain. If you search for me there, you will find me, though. Uh, and, and just follow me there, and that way you can join in the conversation. Because like I mentioned on the last episode, one of the things that I really like to do is to get you as the listener to become more involved in the sort of production of the show to, to help me direct um, you know, the, the, to help me choose the direction that the show is going to go in, the topics that we get into, because I do this for you guys anyway. So it's best if you can chime in and leave me comments or join live at blab.im and, and actually jump on the show and uh, and participate. So a couple of ways you can do that. One, like I said, follow me on Blab. Two, go to techmuseacademy.com and leave me a voice message. Uh, you'll see a little green icon on the right-hand side of every page there, which will just fire up your microphone and you can say, hey, ask a question, leave a comment. And I can play those on the on the show as well and um and, and you'll have an opportunity to sort of participate that way and obviously there's the usual channels facebook twitter uh and whatnot so you can ask questions and start, try to get involved that way as well but if you're feeling bold then by all means um jump on uh, on the episode with me live at blab.im okay so today what i wanted to get into is a topic that it's sort of a concept that i've been rolling around in my mind for the last little while on sort of one of the more effective ways to promote and market yourself as a DIY musician in this modern sort of economy that we find ourselves in. Uh, and I call it, I refer to it as fan farming. And it's sort of, the reason I call it fan farming is because one of the things that I like to do when I'm trying to teach something, uh, especially to a, a, a large group of people. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's sometimes a little easier or at the very least different. But if I'm trying to put something out there that hopefully will have the most impact on a large number of people, I believe it's important to try to come up with an analogy that really encompasses all of the the, the concepts and thing, key things to think about um, that becomes uh, something that's a little easy to chew on, easy to remember when you're moving forward and executing some of these things yourself. And the thing I've come up with for this artist promotion blueprint that I like to talk about is fan farming. Um, what is fan farming? Well, fan farming is essentially a way of looking at how you might approach your marketing strategy on, uh, on or offline, to be honest. But a lot of the, the, the focus is online with the conversations that we have. Um, uh, how, in, how you should sort of consider your approach. What, what should you be doing online on social media? What should you be doing on your website, on your blog? What should you be doing? How should you be putting yourself out there uh, with what as your primary focus in terms of the call to action? What are you trying to get people to do? Because um, it can be kind of confusing. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of information that comes from various sources. Uh, you get information that comes from people who've been in the industry for 20 plus years. So their perspective will par perhaps be a little bit different. You get uh, information from people who are just getting into it, uh, who are, are talking more about the things that they're stumbling on and discovering, and those can be either extremely effective or extremely transient because something that works one day may not work the next day, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what I'm trying to do is sort of get past all of that and get into sort of the core as to what is the underlying strategy that we need to be using, regardless of the surface level things that we do in terms of day-to-day -day techniques and tactics. And, and this is where the idea of fan farming comes from. So let me take a second and break it down for you. Fan farming, it comes out of the concept of content marketing. If you were to study internet marketing, uh, for example, which is something I've dove deep, deep into because I have a business online and so I want to learn from other successful people how to best manage my own online business. And so in doing so, I stumbled upon a lot of 
real gold nuggets uh, of information that can be applied to any business, including our business as musicians uh, and trying to market our music and to try to bring in some revenue from whatever those revenue sources may be to actually turn it into a business instead of just a hobby, okay? So what we wanna try to do is we, we, we need to figure out how to, uh, how to, um, take the, the products and services that we offer, being our music, our performances, gigs, et cetera, et cetera, get them in front of the people who might benefit and find value in them and figure out how to get those people to sort of eat the fruit, so to speak, right? And, uh, and to enjoy what it is that we do, okay? So there's a couple of ways you can do this. And, and I like to, let's stick with the analogy. There's the sort of farming approach, which we'll get into in more detail in a second. And we've got the hunting approach as well. Um, the hunting approach is sort of, you know, trying to find someone who might be interested in what you're doing and literally aim, fire, snipe them kind of thing, right? Now, when you're actually dealing with the acquisition of food, that might be a great uh, uh, tactic. But when you're trying to grow a fan base, that particular tactic is, uh, is uh, not gonna work for you because it basically uh, comes across as the pushy salesman who buy my music, you know, uh, support me on this thing, support me on that thing, uh, you know, jump on my Kickstarter, give me money for this, give me money for that. That's like aiming and firing, trying to snipe uh, uh, your customers. And I don't recommend that practice. What I recommend instead is this content marketing uh, 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 concept, um, which I like to think of as fan farming. So let me break it down for you. Here's how it works. As a musician, what you should be doing on a re fairly regular basis is creating and publishing content, whether that be writing new music and recording it and uploading it to SoundCloud or iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, whether that's uh, blogging, um, writing your thoughts and, and, and whatnot in, in the form of a blog, uh, whether that's uh, live streaming on Periscope or, or platforms like Blab, like we're doing right now. Uh, the bottom line is you should be creating and releasing some kind of content on a fairly consistent and regular basis. This content under my fan farming um, uh, analogy uh, effectively is the seeds that we're planting, okay? We plant the seeds and in the hopes that from that seed will grow a fan, an audience member, somebody who is interested in what we do enough to eventually bear fruit, which is the um, the contribution that they give in return for the value that we provide, okay? So hopefully you're starting to, to, to get a glimpse of what this analogy is all about, the fan farming. We use our content to, as a seed. The, the, the seed gets planted on the internet somewhere, whether that's a YouTube video or a blog post or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can talk about some of the different um, content opportunities that exist for us uh, later on if you like to. But we put out the content, we put it in as many places as possible so it has maximum chance of being discovered by somebody. When that content gets discovered by somebody who resonates with it in whatever way that happens to be, then we now have the beginning the seedling, as it were, of uh, a, an opportunity is a better way of looking at it to actually nurture that seed and grow a fan out of that out of that uh, effort. Okay, so the nurturing process, of course, is something that we want to talk about a little more as well. But for starters, the initial step in this fan farming um, uh, analogy is to create and plant as many seeds as possible on as regular and consistent a basis as you possibly can to maximize the opportunity of those seeds catching the attention of people sprouting into a seedling and giving us now the opportunity to nurture that little seedling and turn that uh, that into a full-grown fan, <laughs> okay? Hopefully you're flowing with me still at this point in the conversation, okay? So um, so how do we do this? Okay, first thing is, is we need you need to sit down and figure out how to turn the things that you already do into content seeds, okay? So, okay, let's say, for example, you already sit and uh, with your instrument of choice and write music. OK, that's something that's an effort that you are already in the habit, hopefully, of doing. So something as simple as throwing your phone on a little stand and, and live streaming uh, via Periscope or, or Meerkat or something similar, you know, just while you're doing that with well, the process, how, allowing people to to tune in and actually get a little behind the scenes insight into how you compose your music, the thought processes, the things you scratch out because you don't like the way they sound or the way they're phrased and whatnot. To, to, to someone who's interested in, in music and the music creation process, 
and to someone who's interested in you specifically, those are fascinating things to, uh, to participate in. There's a, a simple example of taking the effort that you already exert and turning that into a piece of content. You can use a site like catch.me, which is K-A-T-C-H dot M-E, um, uh, connect that to your Twitter account, and that will automatically take that Periscope stream, if you're using Periscope, and grab it and save it on the catch.me uh, website under your profile. And, which you can download. So now you have an actual, not only did you have a live event, but you have an actual pre-recorded video that you can throw up on YouTube. You can edit it if you want to, maybe throw your little logo on the bottom of the screen or whatever, put that up on YouTube and you have a really slick looking piece of content for your YouTube channel. Take that video as well, put it on your website as a blog post, maybe write a couple of paragraphs uh, describing what's, uh, what's going on in the video. Now you've got a blog post. You take that blog post, you share it on Twitter, Facebook, all over the place, all of the places that you hang out. And now you've taken that one piece of effort that you are already exerting, right? Because that's where your songs come from, is that songwriting process. And you've just made a whole bunch of little content seeds and planted them all over the internet, which is the field <laughs> that, we, uh, that we plant and grow our fans uh, in, okay? So it's just a little concept, it's an analogy to help you understand the, the principles behind content marketing and how it could be used in your own uh, endeavors, okay? So phase one of the fan farming process is taking the, the efforts that you already exert turning those into content seeds and planting them in as many places on the internet as you possibly can, okay? Now, and of course, if you want to go above and beyond that and start exerting new efforts just for the purpose of creating more content seeds, then obviously, by all means, the more consistently and regularly you can produce content, whatever that content is, and I recommend all forms as well, the more, uh, the more likelihood of being discovered by people who may possibly resonate with the content that you've published and the opportunity to sprout a bit of a seedling, a fan seedling, uh, uh, exists. These are, you're creating opportunities for this phenomenon to take place, okay? So that's phase one. Phase two is, is, is uh, tracking the content seeds that you've published in a, in, a, in a way that allows you to become notified whenever people who have resonated with what you've published are interacting with you. Now, the way I like to do it is this. There's a couple of things to do, but the, the, the way I like to do it is is I set up a Gmail account. So, uh, you know, my band name at gmail.com. Um, for me, it's Des and Carol. M myself and my lovely lady, we create music together and we have Des and Carol at gmail.com. And what I do is I take all of the, I set all of the notification settings for our YouTube channel, for our website discussions, if people leave comments on the website, uh, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. And all of those things funnel to the Gmail account. So what this allows me to do is every time someone sees a video we posted or reads a blog post that we've published and leaves us a comment that we get notified of that. And this is very important because that notification is the indication that one of those content seeds has just sprouted a little seedling of interest from someone in the world around you, okay? And the goal in phase two is to be able to then reciprocate and get a, a dialogue and a conversation going and to build a rapport and a relationship with that person, which is essentially following the analogy that I like to use, the nurturing and development of the plant, the seedling into a full grown plant, a full blown fan of you and what you do uh, musically, okay? So it's important that you're always aware of when the, the interaction happens between the content and the person who's viewed the content who has some, uh, who, who it resonates with to some degree, okay? So now nowadays with smartphones, if you have your, your social media accounts and whatnot connected with your smartphones, you can get instant notification. So I'll leave it up to you to determine whether or not that's appropriate, but I do believe that the faster you can respond to the comments and, and feedback that you're getting from people who discover your content, the more likely you are to turn that person into someone who wants more, who wants to learn more about you and dig deeper into your world, okay? Um, so, so whether it be instant notifications on your smartphone or whether it be you know checking once a day, maybe twice a day, your email account that all of your notifications go to, uh, either way, you wanna make sure you're aware as soon as possible uh, when someone's interacting with your content so that you can reach back and begin a dialogue, begin a rapport building process. That's essentially what this second phase of the farming process is. Phase one, plant the seeds, content. Phase two, respond to 
the feedback that you get in an effort to create a rapport and a relationship with the person, which is essentially taking that seedling now and 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 watering it and tilling the soil and pulling the weeds and making sure that it has every opportunity to grow into ultimately a fan. Okay. So hopefully this is this is making sense to you. And uh, if you find the analogy cheesy, that's cool because it may make it stick in your mind even better. OK. Um, and again, th the goal with this particular analogy is to make it so that you can easily remember what is important in this in this particular strategy, marketing strategy that we're discussing so that you don't have to have a list with you all the time. The concept is what's important. Exactly how you go about it is going to vary from person to person. And that's why teaching something like this to a large group of people needs, kind of requires a sort of broad analogy that allows you to remember the key fundamentals and apply them in a way that's most appropriate for you and your personality and your, your, your band image, brand image, however you like to call it, okay? Okay, so we've planted a bunch of content. We've uh, we've set up a system that allows us to be notified when um, when people are in interacting with our content. We've developed a habit of as soon as we're able to responding to those notifications, so that we can develop and nurture a, a relationship with e with each of these uh, these potential fans. Okay, um, the next thing we want to do is we want to get uh, somebody into. Okay, this is where it gets this is where it gets interesting for me now. Back in the early days, you know, farming in its very basic sense is, oh, a seed, soil, plant it, water it, check it every day, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very manual process. Well, as time moved on and technology in improved, we ended up with um, ways in which we can automate a great deal of the process. And this is very important because as you begin to scale, when you have seven people who are interested in your content, it's really easy to manually uh, uh, pay, pay close attention to each of those people and really nurture and develop that relationship and give uh, value that's exact, essentially what we're trying to do is give as much value as possible um, so that a person really feels um, uh, like they would like to reciprocate. That's really the, the goal. If you provide enough value to somebody, it's going to be really easy for them to say yes when you ask for a small something in return. Like, for example, hey, I just released my, C my album. It's in iTunes. I, here's the link. I'd love to hear what you think about it. That's a small ask. That's saying, hey, I'm I'm interested in your feedback because of this relationship we've been developing. So here's the link where you can buy my album if you choose to, right? And if you do, let me know what you think because I'm very curious, right? That's a, that's an example of a way in which you might get somebody to reciprocate by buying your album in iTunes, okay? For the value that you've provided. So the the, the question is is as we scale from seven to 77, to 777, to 7,000 fans, how do we set something up that allows us to still be able to deliver as much value as possible um, to our fans, but on a, uh, at scale, but on a, on, a, on a much larger scale, okay? So this is where, in my opinion, and the opinion of, of it's not just my opinion, this is stuff I've learned from, from a lot of very successful people uh, on the internet and around the world, okay? Um, I believe that what you want to try and do is to get people from that point of discovery, whether that's a social media page, a you know, YouTube channel or whatnot, um, you wanna get people from that point of discovery and into your email database where you're able to actually set up an automated system that delivers value bombs, that, that, that delivers content, that lets people into your world and that does it in an automated fashion um, uh, for every person who chooses to to join into your your um, your your world, right, a and allows you to then be able to do that at scale. Okay, so this is how this is how it works for me. I plant my content seeds. Okay, I maintain awareness as to who's interacting with that content. This is a bit of a recap for the people who've just joined us as well. Um, I, I plant my content seeds. I monitor the engagement that happens. When engagement happens, I instantly reply and I begin building a rapport. What my goal is now is to get someone to jump onto my email list. Um, perhaps maybe to download a free a free track or a free uh, something, a copy of my EP or what have you. Uh, and now what I'm able to do is once somebody's in my email database, I'm able to actually ahead of time queue up a sequence of emails that may link out to videos, that may link to anywhere you like, that draw people's attention to more value, more content, more interesting things, entertaining things that you have to offer them. And that gets delivered to them in an automated fashion. 
So maybe once every couple of days, they get an email that says, hey, uh, you know, your name, whatever your name is. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but this is some fun we had, blah, blah, blah. And, and here's, here's a link to a video. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. And it's just give, give, give. And, you, and th this happens because it's automated. It allows you to have it happen at a much larger scale. In the beginning, it won't make a whole lot of difference if there's seven or eight people who are paying attention to you. But I guarantee if that one thing that you've published, for example, goes viral, if you remember the band Walk Off the Earth, they did that Gautier tune where they were all playing the same guitar, very clever, very entertaining, and it went viral. That can happen. These kinds of things do happen. The worst thing I can think of is to have something like that happen and to not have a system in place that allowed me to collect people's contact information so that I could then deliver more value to a much wider audience because that's what this is all about is growing your audience okay so ideally you offer something like uh, a free download um uh, that's a very common one if you go to desencarol.com freebie you can grab a free copy of our five song ep called living room sessions it is there's nothing there's nothing uh, fishy about it it's a legitimate honest giveaway of our music but it serves us a purpose because now we have your contact information and we can reach out to you and offer you more value and we, when we write a song again and record it we can send it to you uh, et cetera, et cetera, and build that relationship so that later on when we have something to offer you actually might be interested in it this is the goal okay and what this does is it takes a lot of the selling out of things you don't have to sell things to people anymore and that which is as we talked about at the very beginning of the conversation that's that hunting sniping approach that we try to avoid because in this um in this sort of uh, direct to fan economy that we find ourselves in um that's not the most effective approach this this nurturing and development of rapport with with people uh, and figuring out a way to do it at scale is in my opinion a far more effective strategy for growing your fan base and turning that fan base into a very loyal fan base uh so that you have what, we, what i like to think of as super fans which is synonymous with customers. Um, this is, and again, if we flow with my fan farming analogy, we've planted our content seeds, we've we've recognized engagement, which is that seedling, we've responded to that engagement, we've built rapport, we've encouraged them into our automated system that allows us to build even more rapport and deliver more value. And then at a certain point in time, that plant is going to grow into a super fan, which is when it blooms and, and grows fruit and now we can receive sustenance okay from that from our efforts and this is the goal with the artist promotion blueprint uh and this sort of fan farming analogy that i've uh sort of come up with i guess right so I'm hoping that this makes sense to you. Um, if you wanna learn more about the Artist Promotion Blueprint itself and how you can actually set up some of these things from the technical perspective, go to artistpromotionblueprint.com and uh, and just join for free. There's, there's a, a great deal more information that I'll deliver to you via email. This obviously, as, as per the conversation we've just had, is an opportunity for me to deliver value to you and hope that it resonates with you and hope that you will want to dig a little deeper into the world of the Tech News Academy. And you know, Never know you may even become a fan as well okay so and uh i'm, I'm gonna open up the conversation here on blab and see if uh, if anyone wants to join in and uh, add their two cents but uh, otherwise i will see you on the next episode of the tech muse podcast